Hello everyone, this is Bowser Jr. And today we're going to react to something scary, but nothing very scary. <laughs> but anyway, we're going to be watching three true Waffle House stories animated by the legendary, I forgot its name. Um, shoot, dang it. Hold on, hold on guys, this is going to take a while. Alright, am I? I am our scary tales. If you do not know who he is, he's one of the best. Well, okay, okay, I, I was going to say one of the best, but sometimes his stories are not really great. My biggest complaining about his stories sometimes is why in the world they have to make the main characters the killer. Now, if it now if it was a prison, if he's writing a letter, like writing a story of prison, that wouldn't make sense. But having him literally making this darn little story without being darn caught... Yeah, that's so unrealistic. Like, just imagine to see, like, that on, on Reddit. Like, someone, like, seriously, like, you could have definitely, like, call accounts on him, even though you don't know where his address and all the where he lives. But still, you get the whole purpose. But yeah, yeah. Like, let's just say he's not a perfect, 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 um, you, um, animated, um, horror animated uh, YouTuber. But still, there are so many stories out there that he does that are really, are really interesting. And this one is on Waffle House. Waffle House. Waffle House. I mean, Waffle House. Like, one of my favorite, like, darn, like, places to go ever. Like, I love Waffle House. Like, it's has, they had the best waffles in the entire world. Yeah. If you've never been to Waffle House, go to Waffle House. <coughs> <coughs> but anyway... Let's actually check this out, shall we? I actually did not know there were some crazy incidents in Waffle House, actually. Because it says true. So, uh, yeah. So let's see if these stories are true. Good. You can call me old, but I'm one of those people who loves to get up in the morning. Whatever day it is, whether or not I have to work that day, I get up at 7 in the morning, shower, and go to breakfast at Waffle's house. My yeah, friends. Waffle House, baby. Shift employees. The amazing white tongue makes me smile every time. Since everything was quieter, I spent some time talking to the cashier. Everything was going great until one day, my peaceful life would change forever. Why? One day I woke up in the morning as usual. After showering, I went to Waffle's house for breakfast. But the first strange thing happened. The place was closed. Huh? I looked at the make sure the time was right. And weird, that's time. weird. But I was also a little late. I looked out the windows of the place and the kitchen lights were on. But the door Wait a closed. second. I to see if there was somebody under the kitchen door. Some sign that someone was turning on the ovens or about to open the place. <gasps> oh god, that's, whoa, what the freak? Oh my god, that's got the crap on me. A girl in a Waffles House uniform was behind me laughing. The girl seemed very nice, but I didn't know her. Oh, <laughs> you gave me the scare of my life. <laughs> um, I was just seeing if they were opening. I usually come here early. A regular customer. <laughs> nice to meet you. I'm Ashley. Uh, nice to meet you. I'm new around here. I'm supposed to open, but it's taking me a little longer than I thought. I guess I'm not the quickest. Um... And they left you alone? They always have, she like, kind of looks a little bit sus, a little. <laughs> yes, I said <laughs> sus. Everyone's saying sus because of manga, yeah, so if anyone could do it, so I can. Massive firing, and the boss wants to start from scratch. They also hired a cook, but he's not very sociable, from what I can see. Oh, that's so. That's a little. That's a little yeah, sussy the right job, there. I don't agree either. Well, I should keep on opening the place. Oh yes, <laughs> of course. Sorry to keep you. After giving me a little smile. The girl went to open the door. It was a Tuesday morning and not many people came today, so I was sure I was going to eat alone. As I entered, I greeted her with a gentle smile, placed my order, and sat patiently waiting for her. Time passed and passed, but my order did not arrive. Slow day in the kitchen, isn't it? Uh, it's okay. No, I'll go check on it right away. <laughs> Thank you very much. I appreciate it. With that said, the girl went to the kitchen. And the silence that flooded the room. Okay, maybe she's not sus at all. If you're in maybe. such a hurry to get the food, why don't you make it yourself, you fucking bitch? Don't oh, jeez! Oh, my outside. God. I just came to see what was taking you so long. And you think you could... 
Oh my god. Oh my goodness gracious. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness gracious. Oh yikes, the language here. Think you could do better than me? I'm sorry. You don't have to treat me like that. I'll let the customer know. And you'll make me look bad. No, I didn't say that. I just stop it. Oh my god! That was more than I could take. I got up in my chair and stormed off in the direction of the kitchen. I barged in and to my surprise, the man was gone. Ashley was on the floor crying and clutching her face. I ran over and bent over to check her. Hey, are you okay? Where, where's the cook? Ashley kept crying, ignoring me. Okay, um, I'll be right back. I'm gonna go look for that piece of shit. I took a um, step don't, step don't, don't do that! I heard Call the cops! Jeez! What the fuck? Before I could yeah, what the I frick is right? Voice behind me. Who did you call a piece of shit, asshole? I barely turned around. I couldn't even see the man's face as I received a very strong blow in the face that threw me almost a meter backward. The man had a lot of strength. He knocked me back as if it was nothing. When I looked up to see my attacker, I was shocked. In front of me, Ashley was standing. Ashley? Uh, what the fuck? Ashley, are you having a stroke? The Wait, what? The person was the woman who had just treated me. But at the same time, she was not. Her facial expressions had totally changed. She looked furious, full of hate, and ready to keep hitting me. Her voice was that of a man. And even though I'd only seen her for a few minutes, the way she stood had totally changed. So, there... There is no cook? What did you just say? Furious. Ashley oh, oh, me oh, oh I'm kind of confused. What the frick is going on here? You're a fucking cook. You have a problem with that? She showed me a knife. No, no, no. You know what I think? I think you're saying that so I won't hurt you. But you don't really think I'm a good cook. Please, please don't hurt me. What the hell do you think you're doing? I told you I like this one. Are you stupid? Ashley went back to acting. Wait, what? Don't get involved in this. You want me to hit you again? I had no idea what was going on. But I, I knew this was I, my chance uh, to escape. I, uh, I, 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 What? The I freak is going on here? you think you're going, asshole? Did you forget that you turned your back on me when you were trying to find me? <laughs> the door is locked now. As you said this, Are you serious? He slowly towards me with a knife in his hand, as if enjoying the moment. I ran desperately looking for the back door, but I didn't know the place and could get locked in. Desperate, I locked myself in the storage room. No, 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 no! Don't go there! Oh, I'm not gonna kill you! When I turned my face, all the employees who always served me were tied hand and foot with tape over their mouths. Terrified. They oh, she, she kidnapped them. That makes oh, sense. Oh, asshole. You scared him off. Now that he saw that we should kill him, can't you do anything right? Hey, I'm sorry, okay? It's not easy being the one doing everything around here. You just act like a dumb bitch and a nice bitch. What the that frick? Was plan, you fucking idiot. You're not the one doing the thinking here. It's me. Got it? Ugh, you ruin everything. All right, smart ass. How are we gonna get him out of here? I don't give a shit. Let's just set the place on fire. I don't want to be a cashier anymore, and you've proved you are terrible at cooking. I had to leave this place urgently. If I stayed one more second, they were going to set the whole place on fire, taking the employees with me. While this talk was going on, I took the opportunity, slammed the door, and ran. Oh, I was just playing. You didn't have to go in there. I knew that sooner or later she was going to catch Playing? Playing? Are you me. kidding me? That's so a little bit playing to me. Close, I turned around and rammed her as hard as I could. The girl had fallen to the floor and was not moving. This was strange, as I did not see her hit her head and there was no blood. Confused, I thought about approaching her. But as I did, I saw Ashley tighten her grip on the knife in her hand. This was a trap. I kept running on my way. Yeah, run, run! You couldn't run. You couldn't run out the doctor now. Too late. I'd already gained too much distance. I closed the door almost a few centimeters before she caught up with me. And while she kicked the door in desperation, I kept locking it and yelling for someone to call the police. She was so desperate and furious that she'd stayed that way for minutes. Holy freaking crap! This is insane. Really insane, guys. And she didn't take hostages. She just kept screaming and forcing the door open with screams that could be so violent that they would terrify the bravest person. 
When the police finally arrived, I no longer had the strength to continue blocking the door, as she almost opened it. But when she did, she was met with two police officers pointing in her direction. When I was at the police station giving my statement, I saw the TV on and they were talking about the police catching a woman named Emily, a mental patient who escaped from the psychiatric hospital during a power outage. The poor person had multiple personality disorder. And Ash oh, a personality the disorder. Personalities dreamed of working at Waffle's house. Their favorite eating place. Oh my god, that's that day, actually kind of where it's sad a little. Because, oh my god, a personality disorder? That's sad. Might be a serial killer hiding. Oh my god, that, that was crazy. That's something I never... That was just crazy. That's just... Dang, it's just... Wow. Hey guys, thanks so much for all the support. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please feel free to do so. Alright, story number two. Nashville after finishing high school. My grandparents stayed there, so I decided to finish my nursing training there. I took a job at the local Waffle House. The place was ten minutes away from my house. My grandpa lent me his scooter to drive to work. I liked working there. The smiling faces of happy customers made my day. My grandparents also came there on Fridays. This way, I could spend some time with them. That's good. Work. Everything was going well until one night. I was about to drive away on my scooter after getting off from work when I saw a worn out truck parked on the other side of the road. Wait, oh, I could tell oh, I, there's the truck. Oh, so, so, I, think, I don't see the truck. <laughs> the light and shadowy atmosphere, I couldn't see the person. Whoever was in that truck was watching me. I was staring at the truck suspiciously when the driver's side door opened and a man wearing a pink woman's house coat. What the freak? What the flip? I saw his face. His eyes were wide and his face a pale look. He had brown hair. After staring uh, yeah, run away. Seconds, he scanned Drive away. And then went back to his truck. Being confused and creeped out a little, I stood there silently. The man drove away mysteriously, leaving me in doubt and suspicion. That night, after coming home, I called the manager and explained this situation to him. But he didn't seem to bother and told me that I was overthinking. The man probably came to eat and, after finding the place closed, decided to leave. But why on earth was he wearing a pink woman's hat? Yeah, what the frick? Why no would someone what? I, tried, I couldn't shake off the fact that there was definitely something wrong with this dude. I kept a sharp eye on work. Yeah. To confront this weird man if he ever came to the Waffle House. And one afternoon, he did. My coworker Julie and I were cleaning the tables. There was no other customer at that moment when the door buzzed open. And I got goosebumps. It was the same man. This time, he was wearing blue tattered jeans and a white t-shirt. There were stains on his t-shirt, and a reeking odor came from him. Oh, God. He went straight to the empty counter and started to ring the bell on the desk. He saw me and Julie cleaning the table, but he kept on ringing the bell while smiling like a creep. I rushed behind the counter and said in a loud voice, Is there anything you need? <laughs> this is fun. He rang the bell one more time and then looked at me. For the first time, I noticed his eyes. He had pale green eyes that could look into your soul. Oh, yikes. A big grin appeared on his face, and he said in a raspy voice, I'm Travis. I saw you last night. Why were you watching me? Excuse me? I was watching you? Is everything all right here, sir? Hearing Julie's voice, yeah, yeah, that's what I was gonna say. Watch, Don't she was watching me, you. Bitch. What did you call me? What? Jealous bitch. <laughs> you need to leave. Oh, but I didn't even order, lady. Is this how you treat your customers? Leave. No. I'm the cops on you, you freak. The man's face changed as soon as I mentioned the cops. He looked at me and then Julie. I wonder that's, I wonder that stains his blood stains. He lifted his hand and made a neck slicing gesture. 
while giving us a spine-chilling smile. I knew it was some kind of warning. We watched him leave, and Julie said, You guys know each other? I explained to her about last night. We both called the manager. But this time, too, he was reluctant to take any steps, as the guy physically didn't do anything alarming. Who knew that he would one day? The date was April 22nd, 2018. I will never forget it for the rest of my life. Oh, I boy. was leaving for work when my grandpa said they would come to the Waffle House. The day was busy, and I barely got time to think about anything other than work. Around five in the evening, the restaurant was in full swing. Pushing the glass door, my grandparents entered the restaurant, and I felt a little relieved. At least now I could chat with them while working. This quality time with them always boosted my energy. It's like it's so, going to be ruined by the psychopath. And laughing with all the happy faces. Everyone was having a great time. And that's when we heard a loud screeching sound. Before I could contemplate what exactly happened outside, Travis bolted into the restaurant. He was wearing a green jacket, white socks, and no bottoms except underwear. His hair was all messed up. Oh, shoot. Here we go. Oh, God. And just then, a woman began to scream. He's got a gun. He's got a gun. Everyone started screaming and running in panic. And that's when Travis shot his first victim. He went nuts and started shooting all the customers present in the Waffle House at that moment. Come with me. There's a back door. Julie shouted while trying to save the innocent people from the hand of the devil. And that's when a bullet hit her in the forehead. Oh, dang! Her brain flew in the air and landed on the floor. Slowly, her body collapsed to the ground. Travis smiled like a psychopath and shot anyone that came in front of the barrel of the skull. Yeah, the manager, you should have, this is all your fault. You should have freaking done something. And that. And of course, a freaking darn ad. Of course, of course, an ad. Addy, 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 ads. And that's when hell broke over me. Both of my grandparents were lying. Oh my god, that is just tragic right here. Their lives too that night. When the Waffle House had nothing but blood everywhere, Travis stopped shooting and looked at me. Oh, the voices in my head are getting louder now. <laughs> Your time has come, little birdie. Please, stop. He raised the gun at me, and I stood like a statue, waiting for my horrible death. Tears rolled down my eyes as I found myself surrounded by bloody bodies. Travis was about to pull the trigger when something miraculous happened. A man with a bleeding hand surfaced from the washroom. I had no idea there was someone else alive other than me at that moment. Yeah, what the frick? He jumped on Travis and they... What? Yeah! Being attacked all of a sudden, Travis got scared and dropped the gun. He then ran away. Yeah, you have to flip out of here. Up. The man's scream broke me from my trance. Call the cops! No! Four people died that night, with many more surviving horrible injuries along with trauma. The man who saved my life and stopped a psycho killer was known as James Shaw. After 34 hours of manhunt, the cops finally managed to arrest Travis Rain King. I still get nightmares from that incident. I didn't even get the chance to speak with my grandparents before some crazy lunatic took away so many innocent lives. And this is all the manager's fault because Jay could have freaking warned. God dang you, manager. Yeah, I'm blaming the manager for this. And I had been out visiting with friends and we left their house. Tell me in the comments below if you blame the manager. Now, I've never been much of a drinker like my boyfriend, so I did the driving. On our way back, we decided to stop by the Waffle House for some late night cravings, as it was the only place where we could get takeout at that hour. So we arrived at the Waffle House, and I went inside to pick up our order. 
As I was paying for the order, a young man... Whoa, me. hello, whoa. He does not look human at all. <laughs> something I couldn't understand. I didn't... He does not look human at all right here. He looks like an alien. At that time of day... <coughs> oh, my God. I collected the food and turned to leave. I noticed a young woman outside of the diner. She, too, was angrily pacing back and what forth. What the frick? I've got to that's his wife. As I made my way out, the young man started to follow me. I sidestepped the woman to get to the parking lot. Now, the duo was following me. Um. My friend was passed out in the passenger seat, and I quickly got in and locked the car door. Surprisingly, the man and the woman stopped and then headed toward their car. A red pickup truck. The young man had gotten into the car, and the young woman sat in the passenger seat. Bloody creeps, I said to myself. As I put my car into reverse, the man drove the pickup truck straight to the exiting lane and blocked my way. The man then got out and came running to my window. Oh, yeah. He started knocking ferociously on my driver's side window and yelled at me. Open up. We need to talk, lady. My boyfriend woke up hearing the ruckus, and we exchanged a confused look. Yeah, yeah, what the frick? Behavior. I unrolled the car window about an inch to talk things out. You stole my girlfriend's wallet, and you'd better give it fucking back right the fuck now. I Wait, have what? I no idea what you're talking about. I have my wallet, and that's it. You fucking stole it from the counter, and we're getting it back one way or another. Dude, I didn't steal shit. Move your car, or I'm gonna back into it. You give it back to me right now, or give me yours, or you're fucking dead. Move. Are you crazy? No, your girl here is a thief. Just then, another car honked, and we saw a new car was coming to the parking lot. The man's demeanor changed all of a sudden, seeing other people. Yeah, get the flip out of here, you creep. Like, seriously. He, he doesn't even look human. He looks like an alien, don't you agree? Thinking the third like, oh my god. Scared him off. I heaved a sigh of relief. My boyfriend looked at me and asked, What the hell happened in the Waffle House? Nothing. These wackos were being weird from the start. <sighs> Let's go home. Yeah. I rolled up the window and backed my car up a few inches. Then I exited the parking lot. At that point, my boyfriend and I were taken aback more than anything else. We got on the highway. Just then, we heard loud honks in the distance. It was the same red pickup truck. The man was driving like an absolute maniac. Dodging other cars, traffic lights, and stop signs until he got so close to us that their car nearly rammed our back bumper. Oh, God. I weaved in and out of the sparse traffic as safely as I could in an attempt to throw them off of our route. Each time, he managed to pull behind us again. He clicked his headlights on and off the bright setting. He leaned on the horn. Inside our car, it was blinding and deafening. I sure as hell wasn't going home so that this psycho, deranged couple would know where we lived. I swear, it was almost like I could hear him, still screaming, even over the blaring car horn. My boyfriend and I didn't do much talking, as I suppose we were both shocked and... Yeah, I can't really blame. To do. Fuck this, we're going to the police station. I doubled back, the car still bearing down on us. When I pulled into the police station... They followed. I locked my car doors, picked up my cell, and began to ring the station because I sure as shit wasn't going to get out of my car. The man practically ran out of his car. Oh, of course. Those are the same crap. Again, banging and yelling. I'd gone way beyond concerned and scared to absolutely pissed. And the woman came out too and started knocking on Mike's side window. You can imagine how terrifying it was being attacked by two people standing on our left and right and constantly banging and screaming at us. We want our goddamn money! Leave me the fuck alone! Yeah! Don't fucking cops search me for your girlfriend's fucking wallet! Just then, they both went silent. 
stopped the banging and cursing and kept staring at us with their creepy big eyes. The man's right eye twitched in a very scary way. Realizing I finally have the chance to set them straight, I said, I'm on the phone with the cops right now. If you don't have it, I, I, I guess you don't have it. Yeah, maybe I left it in the back seat. He then sprinted back to the Yeah, car. yeah, get the flip uh, out of here, you creeps. I sped out of there. I stayed in the police station's parking lot for a while, talking to the cops on duty. When we finally left at about 3.30 a.m., I still made several loops through town before eventually heading home, arriving after 4 a.m. Legally, nothing came of the incident, but a few months after it, we were having dinner at home and watching TV. Mike suddenly changed it to the news channel, and there they were, that unhinged, crazy couple. The reporter was saying, Last night, the patrolling cops of Highway 13 chased a suspicious red pickup truck when they saw blood dripping from its back. The man driving that truck has been identified as Jeremy Higgins. His girlfriend, Susie McGarry, was also in that truck. Oh, the God. They pulled them over, and as they checked the truck, they found a teenage boy, unconscious, bleeding from his head. The teenage boy, Ashton Laurel, was walking home after a study session from his friend's house. He later said that the duo offered him a lift, and then started to physically harass this boy. He put up a fight, and out of panic, the girlfriend, Susie, hit him on the head with a spanner. Thinking he was dead from the blow, they hid his body in the back of the pickup truck. If not for the cops following them, they would have surely dumped the injured boy somewhere in the woods. Luckily, Ashton made it out alive once he was rushed to the hospital. His parents are in tears after having their kid back home. The cops were highly appreciated by Mayor Jefferson for their sincerity and sense of duty. As for Jeremy Higgins and Susie McGarry, prison bars await. Mike and I were out of words. We were happy that finally these two psychos were going to stay behind bars. Yeah, thank also, God. The thought of being able to save ourselves that night gave me chills. Wow, that was some crazy stories right there. Oh my God. So yeah, I'm going to say, man, holy crap. And now that they good that the main characters are not dark, like, like dark killers and stuff. Like, thank goodness. But anyway, I hope you enjoy this. And uh, if you like this video, hit the subscribe button below. And like I said, I'm going to do basically much reactions as I can until we get them, until we get a new phone. All right. Till next month, guys. This is Bowser Jr. signing out.